The topic is sampling distribution for proportion. So let's read the definition. Definition says sample proportions p hats have a normal sampling distribution with mean equal the population proportion. P is the population proportion and standard deviation uh, equal to the p times 1 minus p over n square root of everything. All right, but that has to be provided the following conditions are met. One, the sample proportion p hat must be obtained from a simple random sample. We call that SRS. We want NP to be bigger or equal than 10, which means the size of our sample, size of our sample times the proportion of the population bigger or equal than 10, and then n times 1 minus p bigger or equal than 10. And uh, for all it says is you want the size of the sample to be less or equal than 10% of the size of the population. All right, so let's do this example. The candy company claims that 10% of the M&Ms it produces are green. Uh, so this means that letter P is equal to 0.10. So let's write it here. P is equal 0.1 or 0.10, same thing. What else? Suppose that the candies are packaged at random in small bags containing about 50 M&Ms. So letter N is equal 50. So N is equal 50. What else? A class of elementary school students learning about percent open several bags, count the various colors of the candies, and calculate the proportion that are green. If we, if we plot a histogram showing the proportions of green candies in the various bags, can that uh, histogram be approximated by a normal model? Uh, so the, the central limit theorem, CLT, central limit theorem says yes, as long as those four conditions are met. So let's check each one of them. So condition one, uh, the SRS. So, so what what can we say about the selection? Was it an SRS? Yes, the selection was an SRS. Why? Uh, as indicated, uh, by a random sample of random sample of. So I'm just coding. In other words, go back here at random right? Right here. Alright. For condition two. Condition two, we need to multiply n times p and see if it's less or equal or bigger or equal than 10. What is n? n is the size, it's right there, 50, the size of the sample. Oops. Yeah, it's uh, 50 times 0 0.10. Oops. This is equal to 5. It's not. It's smaller than 10. It's not bigger or equal than 10. So the answer here will be no. Now, we cannot approximate the histogram uh, by a normal model. Now, let's read number B. B says, suppose the class buys bigger bags of candy with 200 M&Ms. So now, our N is equal 200. So, but remember, yeah, again, the students calculate the proportion of green candies they find. So, basically, we still have the same P. 0 0.1. Again, the students calculate the proportion of green candies they find, explain why it's appropriate to use a normal model to describe the distribution of the proportion of green M&Ms they might expect. 
so again so for so we need to check everything again so for number one we already checked it right for the SRS so so it's checked because they select the sample randomly uh, for number two now our n is different so n times p is equal my n this time is 200 my p is still 0 0.1 but if I multiply them I get 20 which is bigger or equal than 10 so this is already okay number three number three n times 1 minus p which is equal n is 200 1 minus 0 0.1 which is 0 0.90 if you multiply that, you'll get 180, which is bigger or equal than 10. So that's okay also. Now, number four. Number four, our size is of the sample is 200. Is this less than 10% of all M&Ms? Of course, it's less than 10% of all M&Ms. So we're done with question B. Now question C, question C says use the 68.95.99.7 rule to describe how this proportion might vary from bag to bag. Okay, so we need to, we need to, uh, to show the 68, 99.7 first of all this is a normal distribution because of the CLT we know that the we know that our mean of the proportion the proportions will be equal just P which is 0 0.10 so I know this is 0 0.1 right I know my standard deviation well, we have to calculate that one. The standard deviation of the p hats, we said by the formula says p times 1 minus p over n square root, which is equal to, what is it, 0 0.1, we said, times 0 0.90, right, 1 minus 0 0.1, divided by, what is the n here, uh, 200, am I right? Yes, 200 square root. Now if you use your calculator you're supposed to get 0 0.021. Now we know if we go one standard deviation we're gonna get 68 percent of p hats. But what is one standard deviation? 0 0.1 plus 0 0.021 will be 0 0.121. I'm going to subtract 0 0.021 from the mean. I get 0 0.079, right? Now I'm going to go another standard deviation to get the 95%. So from here to here, I want 95% of p hats. And of course, I need to add another. I need to add another uh, standard deviation, 0 0.021. So that would be 0 0.142, and I need to subtract one more. You get 0 0.058. Now I want to go one more standard deviation, and I know. Let me do it here. This will be. A 99.7% and how do I get this number I add another standard deviation this will be 0 0.163 subtract 1 this will be 0 0.037 all right so let's answer some questions what is the percentage of the sample proportions that are expected to be between 0 0.058 and 0 0.142 so actually yeah, so actually, see, this is it, uh, 0, 0.0, so actually 95%, right? Just looking at the graph, the answer will be, let me write it nicely, probability of p hats to be between 
between 0 0.058 and 0 0.142 is just a 95% just by looking at the graph. Now, what is the percentage of the sample proportions that are expected to be above 0 0.63? So we're looking for this area. So, of course, we need to do 100% everything. This is what we mean with 100%. Minus 100%. Minus 99.7, so we'll get we'll get both this one and that one. So 100. Well, did I say 100 percent? Minus 99.7 percent, but then I have to divide it by two to get only the right side, which is 0 0.3 over 2, which is 0 0.15. How would this model change if the bags contain even more candies? In other words. Uh, the, well, anyway, the, the 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 central limit theorem says that no matter what, even if n get bigger, it doesn't matter. the The mean will always be p. However, if you look at the formula for standard deviation, this is equal to what p times one minus p over n so if you make uh, well how would model if the back contain more candies so basically we're making n bigger right if n increases and it's in the denominator this means the standard deviation will get smaller in other words we will have um, so let's assume this is let me do it here so Let's assume 0 0.1. So let's assume this is n equal, this is the distribution for n equal, what was the first one? 200? So if you pick n equal for, for 400, for example, we'll get something that looks like this. So this one that I just added, this will be n equal 400, the distribution for n equal 400. But why? I mean, think of it when you increase the denominator. Think of 8 over 1. If I increase the denominator, this is equal 8. But if I, I, this is my n, think of n is equal 1. So if I make it bigger, n equal 2, for example, what would happen? See, 4. So it's smaller. Now let's assume I make two even, I mean the denominator even bigger, four. This will be two. So the fraction gets smaller. So that's what we mean when the denominator n increases. When n increases, the denominator increases, the whole fraction decreases, which means standard deviation will decrease, which means it's gonna be less spread. So the distribution is less spread out. Is that it? Yep, and that's it for this example.